When I went over to my best friend's house with my little daughter, we heard some obscene voices echoing in the hallway of the apartment building in broad daylight. Oh, I hear Daddy's voice. A girl's voice, too. My daughter innocently uttered. What? I strained my ears and froze on the spot. Occasionally, mixed with my best friend's voice was a man's voice. It certainly sounded like my husband's. I switched on the video recording mode on my phone and approached the door. Then I heard a conversation between the two of them, clearly indicating they were having an affair. I lost it at that moment. I couldn't believe my best friend and my husband were cheating on me. I vowed to bring judgment upon them on the day of reckoning. I forcefully swung open the door. What followed next was the betrayers getting a good taste of hell. I'm Melissa, a 36-year-old working mother of a 5-year-old girl. I have a best friend, Jocelyn, who played a significant role in introducing me to my husband. We've been friends since we were kids, living in the same neighborhood and attending the same primary school. While I excelled in academics, I was rather introverted and didn't stand out much. On the other hand, Jocelyn, with her exceptional looks and outgoing personality, pulled me into social circles. In return, I helped her with her studies, even though it wasn't her strong suit. We built a mutually supportive relationship despite our differences in personality. Our bond continued into adulthood. I graduated from a well-known university and landed a job in a big corporation while she worked as a receptionist at an IT company. Her beauty blossomed further, and I was proud to have such a glamorous friend. She had been dating various guys since high school while I had parted ways with a guy I dated in university and hadn't been in a relationship for a few years. It was then that she suggested, It's time you found a boyfriend. I'll introduce you to one of my friends. He's a good guy. That was how I was introduced to Sean, one of her college friends, who would later become my husband. At the time, he was working as a sales for a medium-sized company. Although I earned more, I didn't mind that. He was always attentive, and I trusted Jocelyn's judgment in introducing him to me. We started dating, and eventually he popped the question. I was overjoyed, and we got engaged. Around that time, Jocelyn had broken up with her boyfriend of about a year. He was hot, but being just an ordinary employee at a regular company wasn't for me. I deserve someone more smart and capable. She commented disdainfully, and I chuckled at her remarks. Eventually, the day of my wedding arrived. I was ecstatic in my wedding dress, surrounded by happiness. Jocelyn was, of course, my maid of honor and gave a heartwarming speech. In the middle of the reception, she leaned over to me and whispered, Hey, Melissa, that guy sitting over there is totally my type. Who is he? Oh yeah, that's my cousin Keith. He's four years older than us. Ooh, nice. What does he do for work? Does he have a girlfriend? She was all excited and asked me all sorts of questions, then she headed over to chat with him after dinner. Keith was my mom's older sister's son. He had a great job, and he was good-looking and all, so he was my proud cousin. We had been close since we were little, and I admired him as my brother. From afar, Jocelyn and Keith seemed to be enjoying each other's company. I watched them with a happy heart. After that, Sean and I moved into a rented apartment together, but you know what I found out after getting married? He didn't do any housework. I was just dumbfounded by the way he brushed it off, saying, It's a woman's job. No matter how many times I told him. Three months after the wedding, I went out for dinner with Jocelyn. So, how's married life treating you? Fun? For a split second, I thought about complaining to her about Sean not doing housework. But I didn't want her to feel responsible for introducing him to me, so I just lied. And we're getting along just fine. I'm happy. Aw, that's good then. Well, listen, Melissa, I've got some news today. I'm with Keith now. Whoa, Keith? Really? Yay! I genuinely felt happy that my proud cousin and my best friend had gotten together. We are seeing each other with marriage in mind. It won't be long before I can make a happy announcement, I hope. I'd be so happy if my favorite two people got married. We clinked our wine glasses and chatted away into the night. 
Then six months later, I found out I was pregnant. After the morning sickness settled down, I received a message from Jocelyn saying she and Keith were engaged. I owe it all to you for introducing me to him. Thank you so much. What are you talking about? You introduced me to Sean too. I really wish you a lifetime of happiness. If it's him, everything will be fine. And so they had a beautiful wedding and tied the knot. A while later, Keith said with a coy smile, I never imagined I'd end up marrying your best friend. Let's hang out as couples from now on. I happily agreed. After that, Sean and I, along with Keith and Jocelyn, met up regularly. I couldn't drink because I was pregnant, but it was like a fun double date. Eventually, I gave birth. It was a girl, and we named her Emma. I was ecstatic when Keith and Jocelyn gave us a splendid gift for the birth. After being discharged from the hospital, Sean, who had taken a leave of absence from work, and I started taking care of Emma. But he hardly did any child care. He'd pick her up whimsically, but as soon as her diaper got wet or she got hungry and started crying, he'd just hand her over to me. Maybe she's hungry. Make some milk for her. No way. I don't know how to do it. You should. I've told you how to do it so many times. Fine, then can you do the laundry for me instead? Ugh, that's a hassle. No way. I'm gonna go out for a bit. Instead of trying to learn how to take care of our child or even do housework, he just kept neglecting everything. I was exhausted from giving birth and sleep-deprived from breastfeeding. While I was busy with chores and taking care of the baby, he just lounged around at home, glued to his phone. Sometimes he just casually went out and didn't come back all day. I was annoyed, wondering what the point was of him taking a leave. But I was too busy with childcare and didn't have time to worry about teaching him. I complained about him when Jocelyn called me. I didn't even have the luxury of considering her debt of gratitude for introducing him to me anymore. Jeez, he's terrible. It's supposed to be a team effort. She said sympathetically. By the way, are you thinking about having a baby soon? Keith would be a great dad. Yeah, someday. I want to enjoy being a graceful housewife a bit longer. Since I couldn't interfere with her decisions about having children, I just went along. Even after Emma was born, I kept having phone conversations with her and occasionally invited her and Keith over for dinner. Keith totally doted on Emma, saying, You're welcome to our place anytime. When Emma turned two, Sean came home with a sulky face one day. Man, I got scolded unreasonably by my boss again. You did mention you guys didn't get along well. Are you okay? Of course not. I was so fed up that I handed in my resignation on the spot. What? I was flabbergasted. Even though I was back at work, there would be more expenses with Emma, and yet he decided to quit his job without consulting me. Don't worry about it. We'll manage with your income for a while. I also want to relax while I get unemployment benefits. So, I'm counting on you. And just like that, he suddenly became unemployed. I wanted to leave the housework and childcare to him since he was at home, but all he did was drive Emma to and from daycare. He left all the housework for me to do after coming home from work. Since he was out during the day, I thought he was seriously looking for a job, but he couldn't find one, and eventually his unemployment benefits ran out. In the end, he got a new job through connections, but by then, my feelings for him cooled down. Three years have passed since then, and I'm still working while caring for Emma and doing all the housework. On the other hand, Sean claims to be busy with work and spends more and more time away from home. Still, I remember his period of unemployment and think that at least he has a job now, so I keep quiet. I've been meeting up with Jocelyn and Keith as before. Even though they haven't had a baby yet, they seem happy together, and there's no reason for me to meddle. One Saturday, Sean is supposedly called to the office and leaves early in the morning. 
Recently, my mom came over with a bunch of dried fruits and whatnot from Trader Joe's. There's too much for us to consume at home, so I want to share some with Jocelyn, but she's not picking up her phone or reading my messages. I ask Emma, "Want to go visit Aunt Jocelyn? If she's not home, we can stop by the nearby park." Okay, I want to go. So I get ready and head out to her apartment with Emma. Even if she isn't there now, maybe she'll call me while we're at the park. We arrive hand in hand, and I let Emma press the code to open the entrance door. As we walk down the hallway of the apartment building, I faintly hear voices. When we get to Jocelyn's door, I notice voices coming from inside. Oh, I hear Daddy's voice. A girl's voice too. Emma innocently utters, "What?" I froze in shock, straining to listen. Emma, wait by the elevator for a bit. Don't go anywhere. She says, "Okay," and moves away from me. I turn on the video recording mode on my phone and approach the door. Then I hear a conversation between the two people, clearly indicating they're having an affair. I'm livid when I realize everything. I can't believe my best friend and my husband are cheating on me. I won't forgive them. I'll drag them to hell. I forcefully open the door and let myself inside. There, in the living room, are Sean and Jocelyn. They're startled by my sudden appearance. They immediately move away from each other, but it's all too late. Sean, trying to cover his nakedness, asks, oh, "What the heck are you doing here?" I came to see Jocelyn, but what the heck are you two doing? He shrinks back as I glare at them with bloodshot eyes. Oh well, we're busted. Jocelyn brazenly utters without a hint of shame. I turn to face her. Jocelyn, what the heck are you thinking? You're married to Keith, and yet you're messing around with my husband. Since when? College, but we were just friends after we started working. But then we rekindled around the time you had Emma. College, and yet you introduced him to me. She smirks at my question. Yeah, I've always hated your high and mighty attitude. Just because you're smarter than me, that's why I handed him to you as a hand me down. Be grateful, since you've got a daughter and all. Fine, got it. I take a moment to collect myself. I just sent the video to Keith. <gasps> Their faces went pale in an instant. I would think that they expected things would turn out like this once their affair is exposed, but they suddenly seem panicked. God darn it! What the heck are you doing? You don't need to tell him anything. Yeah. Well, why would you send the video to him? He's a lawyer, you know. Right, Keith's profession is a lawyer, not just any lawyer. He has his own law firm and employs Sean as a clerk. In other words, Keith's his big boss. He's coming soon, so behave yourselves. Hey, stop it! Let go! Don't touch me, you idiot! As we wrestle, the door swings open. Keith is here. He looks at the nearly naked pair and nods at me. So, where do we start? I saw the video, Jocelyn. No, honey, it's a misunderstanding. You mean this? He pushes the video on his phone screen to her, and her face turns ashen. Prompted by him, she begins to talk. She admits that in college she had a physical relationship with Sean. She introduced him as a hand-me-down to secretly make fun of me. After both of us got married, they coincidentally ran into each other while Sean was on a leave of absence. Things got heated, and they ended up in a hotel that day. From then on, they met secretly and enjoyed the thrill behind our backs. Keith let out a deep sigh after hearing everything. I get it. We're getting a divorce. What? Are you serious? Listen, the only person I truly love is you. I can't forgive you after seeing this scene. We're getting a divorce. Wait. Jocelyn slumps while Sean trembles beside her. Keith then turns his gaze to him. Ah, <sighs> now it's your turn. I gave you the job, but 
Your work is sloppy and frankly useless. It makes sense now why your previous boss was scolding you. What the? Your attitude may have been bad, but I was willing to overlook it because you're my cousin's husband. But now that you've been caught cheating with my wife, it's a different story. You're fired. Fired? Please, I beg you. He pleads, but he's brushed off. Then he stumbles over to me and kneels on the floor. Honey, I'm really sorry for what I've done. I apologize. Please, forgive me. I don't want to be separated from Emma. Let's go back to being a happy family. That's when I cut him off. Don't even joke about it. There's no way I can forgive you for cheating with my best friend. We're getting a divorce too. And both of you better be prepared because we'll be seeking alimony. Divorce? And alimony? Jocelyn and Sean are both shocked, but Keith smiles as he informs them. Of course, we'll be seeking alimony. And we'll make sure to collect it even if we have to take you to court. You should be grateful I didn't punch you, Sean. They break down into tears and protest. Leaving them in their tumultuous state, I head home with Emma. A year later, the divorces of Jocelyn and Keith and Sean and me are finalized. Thanks to Keith's diligent work as a lawyer, we're able to secure alimony from both parties. Sean has taken out a loan to pay me alimony, plus child support. Jocelyn, who was a housewife, asked her family to help, which was declined, and now works at a sketchy night venue to pay off her alimony. Sean, who was fired from Keith's firm, is job hunting during the day and working at a convenience store at night to repay his debt. They briefly lived together, but eventually broke up due to constant fighting. Although they sought refuge with us at one point, we firmly turned them away. I have no idea what has happened to them after that. I'm sure they're living a miserable life. I've apologized to Keith for introducing Jocelyn to him, but he comforted me, saying, We've both been through a lot. From now on, I'll be prioritizing the positives in my life, relishing in watching my daughter's growth.